photographers, here's the new camera Fujifilm announced today, the X-S10. I'm not going to try and decode the name, but it is a new model type. I'm going to give you a quick tour inside and out and tell you what I love and what I hate about this new camera. Maybe that's harsher terminology than I'd usually use. You get the idea. I've only had the camera for slightly more than a day, so this is a preview. Hopefully a full and detailed review follows shortly. The XS10 should be available mid-November, with a suggested retail of $1350 Canadian dollars for the body only, $2050 with this 16-80mm f4 lens. Uh, the overall design is simple, tending to utilitarian, but with enough of Fujifilm's design aesthetic. Nice finish, nice slope down on the shutter button, nice angle on the back, and I mean nice in design, but also in access and comfort. And it pairs nicely with this 16 to 80 millimeter lens. Mark that, love. Ditto, the big deep grip. Great for a camera this size. Enough clearance between the lens and the grip. Index has to curve around to the shutter. Thumb falls nicely on the AF on key. Uh, more love, although the back thumb rest is on the small side. Uh, slide my thumb over to the back dial, slide my index down to the front dial. Both are big and solid, with the right amount of friction as they turn. The front dial often adjusts the aperture, it also sets the focus area size. Uh, Fujifilm models often have an optional press on those buttons, uh, not here. The back dial mostly sets exposure compensation, Nicely loving both of those. Uh, another unlabeled dial, top left, mostly sets the film simulations. The battery is inside the grip, but it's not the new battery from the X-T4. Disappointed. Hate that. And the single card slot is jammed in with the battery. Hm, hate that too. But the sideways battery compartment leaves lots of room for a quick release plate. Love that. There's a standard 3.5mm mic in port. That's not in the way of the swivel, so love that. Micro HDMI, though, hate. Love USB-C, which doubles as a headphone jack with an included adapter cable. And here's a surprise. A PASM dial. Not the usual for Fujifilm. I prefer the simplicity of the models that don't have one, but I appreciate that not all of you agree, so while that's a hate for me, it's probably a love for most of you. Exposure compensation is set with the rear dial, aperture is set with a ring on the lens in the appropriate modes, and nearly all Fujifilm lenses have an aperture dial. Love that. Now for ISO, Press the key on top, and then turn the rear dial. Meh. Don't hate or love that. The ISO menu setting is buried on screen 3 of the shooting settings. Hate. Should be on screen 1. But I love that there are three auto options, but Fujifilm isn't keeping up with those that have added faster and slower settings in auto ISO to prioritize shutter speed or quality. More hate. Uh, for custom settings on the dial, C1 to C4, love that. But the mode options are stills only, so it can't be used for video. Uh, that's another for the hate column. The interesting note here is that these custom settings can be configured on the fly. If you make adjustments when you're using a custom setting position, they're saved when you leave it. I love that, but the seven custom settings on the Q menu are gone. And maybe there are more gotchas to discover, but if there are, a menu option turns off the auto update. Love. Uh, most Fujifilm models have a focus mode selector on the front. I love that, so I hate that it's gone missing and been relegated to a menu setting. Uh, I need more time to test the focus, 
but with the same processor and the same options as the X-T4, I'm expecting to love that. Up to 425 points, all phase detect, and nearly full scene coverage. And I love face and eye, but the lack of animal detection goes in the hate column. I also hate that when face detect is on, photometry, the meter mode selection, goes into hibernation. At the briefing, Fujifilm told us that the internal frame is magnesium alloy. Love that. And it's a solid feel, weighing 465 grams, about 100 grams more than the X-T30, but 150 less than the X-T4. Now, the LCD swivels out to face forward, up and down. And again, that's a feature some will love and others will hate, for still specifically, uh, just up and down is simpler, as you don't have to rotate out first. But I'm about video and love the full forward swivel. There's a built-in pop-up flash. Always nice to have it handy when you need a fill flash. Love. And I love everything it has in common with the X-T4, including the 26 megapixel APS-C X-Trans4 sensor and the fourth generation X processor. Same high quality images you could expect from Fujifilm's best models. Love. More film sims than ever, and they're color coded. Not sure what the colors represent here, but that's all love for me. And if you're in auto mode, there's a new auto film simulation. Uh, color treatment doesn't start or end there. First, loving the update to auto white balance with white or ambience priority. And I love the tone curve to either increase or flatten contrast. <laughs> then mono images can be colored, grain can be generated, color chrome and color chrome blue effect can be added all in the love column. And as long as you're recording raw, any of these can be selected in the playback raw processing mode. <laughs> Clearly loving that. Stabilization is rated up to six stops, only half a stop less than the X-T4, but still love that. And a button activates drive mode selection, which I loved, until I scrolled down and realized that in order to access higher burst speed modes, I'd have to go to the menu to change the shutter from mechanical to electronic. Hate that. But do love the shutter options. And now more buttons can be customized than ever. Even what was the view mode button beside the viewfinder can be customized. And I can repurpose the video record button to change the shutter mode Love. Uh, the left side dial can be customized, love, but no custom options for the right side front and rear dials, hate. With the sh electronic shutter, 10 and 20 frame burst, and with a 25% crop to the 17 megapixel medium size, up to 30 frames per second. Uh, qualified love on that, I'll test the buffer in the full review. A bunch of brackets, including HDR and panorama, and multi-exposure, now with four combined options and up to nine images. I mean, <laughs> it's a feature I don't use, but love seems appropriate for this flexibility for those that do. Uh, also hidden in the menu, the focus bracket, auto and manual options, love. Now, there are more drive modes in the menu, but Fujifilm has had these for a while, Sports Finder and PreShot. While interesting, their limitations means I don't love them. Other brands have self-timer modes with more time selections and options for the number of images taken. <laughs> Some even set the time between. Nothing here. Hate that. However, my Easter egg Combining timer with burst to take five images still works. A little love on that. Independent video mode, making it easy to switch from stills to video, retaining the settings for each. <laughs> Clearly, I love that. A video up to 4K at 30 frames at both 16x9 video and 17x9 cinema aspects. HD records up to 240 frames. 
data rates up to 200 megabits. Also, F-Log, 8-bit internal, 10-bit on HDMI, big love. Optical, in-body and digital stabilization, conditional love, those need some testing. And one of the best audio control screens, love. A nice change. While recording, the timer counts up instead of down. Love, but arbitrary record limits remain, mostly 30 minutes. In high speed, 240 is limited to 3 minutes. Hate those limits. For Fujifilm regulars, the menu is familiar. It's context sensitive, so provides the appropriate options for stills, for video, and for playback when you're in those modes. Love that. But it does mean you only get the full video menu in video mode. Not sure about that. Oh, but, 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 the menu that resets to the top just about every time is hate, hate, hate. And if you use my menu, that's the default. Please, please, please give us an option to leave it at the last selection. A new connection setting to use the XS10 as a webcam in the time of COVID. Love that. USB-C can power and charge the camera Love, but there's an included cable, no charger, not even a power adapter. Hate that. Uh, one of the kit options is this fairly new weather sealed, optically stabilized XF 16 to 80 millimeter lens. They also sent the 23 millimeter F2 with a manual focus clutch that I love, and the 10 to 24, recently updated to a WR version, but this is the first generation. That isn't. Caveat emptor on that, the WR badge is the only way to tell them apart. So the X-T2 and X-T3 had their T20 and T30 Junior sibs. Uh, this may be the Junior to the X-T4. It's smaller, lighter, and less expensive. And the feature set misses just a few items. Love. I didn't total them up, but loves are probably outweighing the hates. However, sometimes it only takes one to take a camera out of contention for you. <laughs> More detail, including performance tests, samples, and hands-on demos in a full review, hopefully coming soon. Now, for a while, I've been recommending the X-T30 as a relative bargain. I may be switching that to the X-S10. Remember, you don't need a new camera to be a better photographer. Do keep working on your skills until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. I love interacting with you. Please post your relevant questions and civil comments below. I do read and reply. Now, there may be some of you watching who are not yet subscribers. If you love this, please take the opportunity to join our select group. And thanks for watching. Stay safe. Thank you.